सर यू नो सर इन्होंने ना अभी बड़ा अच्छा एक क्वेश्चन पूछा था यहाँ रूम में कि कितने लोगों की शादी मैट्रीमोनियल साइट के थ्रू हुई है सो यू नो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल बिफोर दे आंसर आई वॉन्ट यू टू आंसर क्या आपकी भी मैट्रीमोनियल साइट के थ्रू हुई है मैं है ना रितु जी अपने कस्टमर्स के साथ कम्पीट नहीं करता सो बट नो आई थिंक शादी मैं आपको बता दूँ मेरी मैट्रीमोनियल साइट के थ्रू हुई है एंड Um, the fact that Shadi today has uh, surpassed five million successful marriages. Actually, it's seven million. Seven million. That's now. big enough. Iska, iska, I will give you a little context. Deta hu. Because people think of this as matrimonial matchmaking, but people don't fully grasp the gravity of the situation. So, aisa hai na, mare India me or West me, main US me raha das saal. So, waha par aisa hai ki You meet somebody, chemistry, fireworks हो जाते हैं You feel dizzy in your head, you fall in love, you go down on one knee and propose, and शादी हो जाती है right? So it's a if question. If you fall in love, then you get married. In India, it is not an if question. It is a when question. आप जब से पैदा होते हैं right? तब से सारी कायनात जुड़ जाती है आपकी शादी करवाने में सही है कि नहीं घर में जब से आप बच्चे हो तब से बात अरे बड़े हो के किससे शादी करो अरे भाई मेरे को यही नहीं पता है मैं अगले दिन क्या करूँगा शादी किससे करें सो द पॉइंट इज दैट द होल यूनिवर्स कंस्पायर्स टू फाइंड यू लाइफ पार्टनर बट द प्रॉब्लम इज फाइंडिंग अ लाइफ पार्टनर इसका जक्स्ट पोजिशन देखिए द मोस्ट प्रेशर टू गेट मैरिड इन इंडिया हिज इज अराउंड मैरिज इन अ कंट्री लाइक इंडिया बट द हार्डेस्ट प्लेस टू फाइंड अ लाइफ पार्टनर इज इंडिया क्योंकि हम डेटिंग तो इनकरेज नहीं करते बहुत राइट बियॉन्ड सम अर्बन सेंटर्स वर्क प्लेस रेशियो इज अ हाईली स्क्यूड टूअर्ड्स मैन तो आप मिलो तो कैसे मिलो फिर भी हमारी आबादी है हंड्रेड एंड फोर्टी क्रोर्स नो वो जोक्स अ पार्ट इट वॉज अ बिग प्रॉब्लम एट दैट पॉइंट बिकॉज पीपल डिट नो हाउ टू फाइंड अ लाइफ पार्टनर एंड टूडे यू फील यू नो I mean, of course, now you that you have a data which is now going on to about more than 20 years. And how do you find that today at Shadi people are able to sort of, just say, आपने कहा वो fireworks कैसे मिलाते? हाँ, वो मेरे मतलब की बात नहीं. No, I think look, see, uh, let's let's I'll give you a little more context. Uh, so, एक मैंने कहा कि is an if question and a when question, right? When you reach your early 20s. अंटिल आफ्टर थर्टी तो मतलब कहते हैं अब तो तेरी शादी नहीं होने वाली है नहीं बट ड्यूरिंग दैट पॉइंट एवरीबडी कंस्पायर्स टू गेट यू मैरिड अभी देर इज वन बिग मिसकनसेप्शन इन इंडिया अबाउट मैरिज एंड यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट फायर वर्कस एंड आई एम गुड कम टू दैट एंड दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू अंडरस्टैंड पहले क्या होता था अरेंज मैरिज तो आपको क्या लगता है अरेंज मैरिज में फायर नहीं होते थे मेरे तो हुए हैं बाकी पता नहीं किसी का क्या कह हम फायर वर्क के बदौलत तो यहाँ बैठे हैं <laughs> आप सभी उसी के बदौलत बैठे हो है ना बट वेस्ट में क्या होता है लव मैरिज डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ फायर वर्क बट इंडिया आई मीन इफ यू लुक एट शादी डॉट कॉम अदर प्लेटफॉर्म लाइक दैट दीज आर नॉट अरेंज मैरिज प्लेटफॉर्म दिस डायकॉटमी दैट वी क्रिएट अरेंज मैरिज एंड लव मैरिज इज एक्चुअली वेरी फॉल्स what has happened over time has arranged marriage has given way to something that we call planned marriage matlab jab puri family aur kainat aapke piche lag jati hai wo age mein then you along with your parents decide ki dekho theek hai you know do saal aur de do kar lenge and aaj wo rebellious period gaya hai 90s ka when you wanted to marry against your parents wishes right. today people say i will find the choice i will exercise the choice but without upsetting my parents yeah. <clears throat> right and parents say ha hamari pasand se kar le to acha hai but unki pasand zaruri hai Correct. right so then they plan that it's time to find a life partner and they go about using platforms such as shaadi.com uh to obviously wahan fireworks to matlab is part and parcel of it because it is not like aapne ek profile dekhi click kari aur agle din shaadi ho gayi you actually meet the person there's a courting period i think average time taken is somewhere around 6 to 12 months so you know you go through the journey uh, no so i know it's not easy to get married in india but how difficult was it for you to start shaadi and become an entrepreneur 
एक्चुअली यू नो आई नेवर थॉट अबाउट इट दैट वे हमारे लिए क्या था ना इट वॉज अ वेरी डिफरेंट टाइम आज जो है आंट्रप्रनोरशिप हैज बिकम वेपनाइज इन सम वे राइट वॉट यू हैव इज प्ले बुक्स हाउ टू बिल्ड इन थर्टी डेज हाउ टू रेज कैपिटल इन हंड्रेड एंड एट्टी डेज राइट सारी प्ले बुक्स है हाउ टू बिकम अ ग्रोथ हैकर you have all these playbooks on the internet mentors and there are so many who have come before us over the last 20 years that you can learn from when we got in frankly mujhe to ye bhi nahi pata tha angel investing kya hota hai right it was angel was something i thought ki aap ek bar mar jate ho to angel ban jate ho <laughs> i i seriously didn't know this word at that time uh so we didn't really have these mentors and these frameworks and we didn't have much to lose I was working in the US I remember main 10 saal wahan raha I studied there I joined a company and first time I experienced stock options wo company bahut badi ban gayi and due to the stock options I had become very senior there I became a multi millionaire in my early 20s fir dot com crash hua so I lost it all right so at that point I had made something big and lost it all to khone ke liye कुछ था ही नहीं तो बस यू नो चल पड़े दे वॉज डैड को देखा था बिजनेस करते हुए आई ग्रो अप इन अ बिजनेस फैमिली एक्चुअली ही स्ट्रगल्ड अ लॉट ही जस्ट पास्ट अवे लास्ट मंथ गॉड ब्लेस इज सोल बट वो सौ रुपए की नौकरी करते थे फिर उन्होंने जाके अपने बिजनेसेस बनाए तो ही वॉज माई फर्स्ट रोल मॉडल एज एन आंट्रप्रनो लेकिन उन्होंने कभी बिठा के सिखाया नहीं कि बिजनेस ऐसे किया जाता है वो हम उनको देख देख के फ़ोन पे यू नो बातें कर कर के करते हुए सुनकर I learned how to sort of understand business a little bit. So once I had lost it all in the U.S., I said, "Chalo, abhi ghar ki taraf wapas chalte hain. Let's come back to India." And I had nothing to lose, so we started a bunch of different sites. The idea at that point was to start an internet conglomerate. So, a matchmaking ho gaya, a e-commerce bhi humne shuru kiya tha, uh, greeting cards online. But the problem was that users were not there. If you look at 2000 to 2010, the internet user base in India went from 7-8 million to only 12 million. Right. So the internet really in India is only five years old. It's not 20 years old. So frankly, at that point, to answer your question in short, there wasn't much to lose, and so we just started. And it was very very tough, right? Because fundamentally, when you start an internet business, what do you need? You need internet. Yeah. तो इंटरनेट ही नहीं था और हम इंटरनेट बिजनेस शुरू कर कर चुके थे सो इट वॉज वेरी वेरी चैलेंजिंग एट द पॉइंट सो यू नो सो यू टॉक्ट अबाउट कि यू नो यहाँ पर अब सब लोग ऑन्ट्रप्रन्योर हैं या वो बनना चाहते हैं नो वेन यू बिकमिंग एन ऑन्ट्रप्रन्योर फेलियर्स आर वर्चुअली पार्ट एंड पार्सल ऑफ यू नो वॉट यू डू और वॉट एवर इनिशियटिव यू टेक ऑलमोस्ट एवरी डे um so and you said that you know uh, the stock market crashed and then you came back so it, how do you feel and you know please advise entrepreneurs in this room that how do you sort of take failure uh, without a pinch of salt and you know go again next day out there and say koi farak nahi padta let's let's go and do it all over again and emotionally mentally how do you make yourself strong enough to be able to uh, overcome that situation and you know live the next day as if nothing it doesn't matter that's tough ritu i think you can't read a book or go to a course and say ki mujhe itna dheet bana do you know this word dheet my father used to call me dheet when i was very small uh to itna dheet bana do ki failure does not affect me i think that is a very novel quality that few people have right uh so i think you know what you're asking about is resilience yeah, right <coughs> excuse me so i think resilience is something that is a combination of nature and nurture right? i can tell you my own example uh for me personally while i am a big pessimist in the short term ki jo bhi hona hai bura hi hona 
but in the long term i'm an eternal optimist right so i'm i'm fundamentally optimistic about the outcomes in my life and everybody's life in the long term so that gives me the courage to keep going right even though i fear the next move may fail longer term it keeps me going but if somebody were to try to develop these attributes and these skills i don't think it's for everyone first let's step back a little bit right i don't even think entrepreneurship is for everyone right i remember back when i used to work as in a job in the us jab main vacation ke liye india aata tha i think those were the last times i ever had vacations in my life because i didn't care ki wahan par aag lag jaye to mujhe kuch farak nahi tha right after you become an entrepreneur it's very hard to switch off right and and so you know while the last few years capital has been available for everyone or everybody is reading about stories about their friends people they went to college with the people they went to school with raising 10 million and 100 million aur sab kehte hain are yaar main kyun nahi kar sakta hu even i should be an entrepreneur right but that's not good enough reason right you don't become an entrepreneur because you want to be an entrepreneur and that's the only goal you have right the media prints the success stories about people who went from 0 to 1 but what you don't hear about is the 99% people who never made it who failed because they are not celebrated right so it seems a lot easier but if you were to commit to entrepreneurship i think you have to commit to a very long term game uh, you know i use a term often be greedy right but be long term greedy right unless and until you think you have that quality to go against all these forces and your strength of purpose is far bigger than the day to day discomforts that you will endure over the next 10 years don't take up entrepreneurship right uh that's the only way i can actually say it you have to give it to him really you know mujhe aapne word kaha tha na deep you either you either it's in your nature or you nurture it because either way it's going to ha- you want to have to embody that in you to be able to do business every day especially in india i think yeah and you will have a lot of doubts you know logon ko lagta hai ki and this is just human nature right hame hamesha ye lagta hai ki ek bar main ye point pe pahunch jaau then life will be great right but that's not true you will doubt yourself every day i haven't met any successful entrepreneur even now after all these years who doesn't doubt themselves today right there will be days you feel on top of the world but there will be days that you feel like a total imposter i do even now so you know uh, what you cannot cure you endure right absolutely ladies and gentlemen you have to give it to him for <laughs> actually being able to put that uh, out here in the open i I'm, i'm sure all of us feel this but <coughs> it's hard to say it out there So you know, uh, Anupam, we've, um, we've become a big fan of you since we've been watching Shark Tank. Me too. And <laughs> of yourself. <laughs> so um, now the question we would love to know, and I think all of us would love to know it over here in this room, is that you know, even before Shark Tank, you were an angel investor, and you, I think, have a portfolio which is the highest, about 250 companies that you invested in over the years. Shark Tank is just maybe a few year old phenomena, but you've been investing since like almost 15 years now um in startups so i mean what's got to give you know it's hard to choose startups while i know after doing 250 and probably listening to a thousand pitches you you sort of maybe crack that formula where you know ye startup makes sense and you know this this is a startup that will work and therefore you should invest in it so you know and donning both these hats both as an entrepreneur and as an investor how do you now evaluate uh, a startup to say that this looks promising do you do it by mm-hmm. economic numbers or do you sort of go by a uh, emotional aspect ki is aadmi mein paisa lagana hai yeah i think it's a bit of both uh but l- let me break down your question because i think there were quite a few questions in there 
So is the question how do I how do I evaluate companies? Yeah, and or you know, honestly, <coughs> uh, I mean, what part of it is maths, <coughs> and what part of it is um, I would say art? Look, I think it depends. Investing really is as much an art as it is a science, right? And that's not just me, but any VC will tell you that. Particularly when you come in at a very early stage. Because when you come in at a very early stage, there are so many variables stacked up against you, right? So, for me, frankly, there are only three things that matter at a very early stage, right? Because, so first let's break down a couple of things. Uh, I'll answer one question very specifically. Do I look at the finance side more in terms of return? Uh, or how do I look at things? I am not great at financial engineering. I'm terrible at optimizing, you know, 18% or 23% or an IRR of 26%. I, that's not me. That's great for private equity investors, for chartered accountants and that nature. But that's not me at all. So you have to play to your strengths. What... Therefore, I've chosen early stage investing because what that allows me to do is play for zero to a thousand returns, right? So when you play for that order of magnitude, even if you come out at 10x or 20x or 30x or 100x, that IRR is going to be very, very healthy, right? I don't have to super optimize it. So that's kind of my play field because that's what I understand. I can, given the time I've spent in technology and consumer businesses, I can look at an idea, right, or a concept or a business plan and the team and have some sense of whether this will find market acceptance. And because I'm coming in so early, if I'm right, the outcome is 100x. So I don't have to worry too much about, you know, super optimization. So, so that's one thing. In terms of how I evaluate companies and teams, uh, there's really, when it comes to early stage, there's really only three things. And I'll, I'll try to give you an example. Uh, I mean, one is, of course, team, right? Uh, investing in a company is, is really a long-term affair, if you ask me, particularly in India. Companies don't get built in three, four years. It's a 10-year journey, right? So unless there's chemistry with those investors or with the founders, uh, and unless you enjoy meeting and talking to them, what's the point? Right. So besides high IQ, which is a given, you want to ensure that you have chemistry and you like, look forward to talking to these people. Uh, so I think that's one. The other is total addressable market. Yeah. Right. And the reason total addressable market is important is because large markets are very forgiving. If you have a market of crore, if your team is smart, you pivot, pivot karke, you'll find a nice business. But if the market is small, no matter what you do, you will struggle. Right. And sometimes, there is no market. Right? So then you have to find proxies. Just like when we started Shadi.com, there was no market. So how do you determine total addressable market? Then you have to really get close to the customers and understand that the problem is how big it is. If customers are really, you know, screaming for this without actually articulating it, if you can develop that sense, then you know that the TAM can be big. And the third final vector is timing. And I'll give you an example. Uh, which uh, phone do you think was the first, uh, yeah, which was the first handheld device which you could operate with touch? in the world? Sorry? Nokia? 95. N95. The first smartphone? Samsung Galaxy. All right, so clearly I'm tilting the average age here much higher, but uh, all of you guys are probably too young to know this, but there was a device called the Palm Pilot which was way before Apple. It was a touch screen device, right? And people used to use it in the US for productivity, for managing their work, for managing their email, right? But why did 
Apple become what it did and Palm Pilot didn't. The device existed many years before Apple. Simply because of timing, right? When Apple launched the smartphone, ubiquitous internet connectivity and therefore apps were available on your phone. Without the infrastructure of the internet and ability to always be connected to the internet, you could not have had an Apple phone, right? So the timing of the launch was perfect, given a year or two window here and there. So, you know, that's just one example. But my point is, uh, let's take, for example, creator-led businesses, or companies building infrastructure for creator-led businesses. That was not possible five years back. It's only possible today because you suddenly have thousands and hundreds and millions of creators. So timing plays a very critical role, and that is something that comes with experience, understanding the timing is right for this business or for this business model. So yeah, team, TAM, timing, T3, easy. And what about the person? The person, which is the team? Yeah, Yeah, the team, the founder, co-founders. Yeah. yeah, I think uh, I already mentioned that. It's critical, but everybody says team. So I think what you want me to do is maybe go a layer below and what about a team, right? Yeah. Uh, so, so here's the key, right? Here's what I look for in a team. One is, do they, there are three things, <clears throat> or maybe, maybe a little more, but first and foremost, they have to be passionate about the problem they're solving, right? Because as I said, India mein das bara saal to lagte hain badi company banane mein. Or agar aap passionate nahi ho, if you're just doing it because your friends have built a company and you also want your pay, name in the newspaper saying, you know, raise a series A of 10 million, you're not going to last very long, okay? So if you're doing it because you're really passionate about solving that problem, I think that's one box that's checked off. The other thing that I look for is business acumen, right? Hindi mein isko dhanda bolte I come from a Baniya family. So, for me, dhanda aana bahut zaruri hai. Good products do not necessarily make good businesses. People often mistake good product managers and good storytellers as good businessmen. Not true. And that's a big, big red flag. Particularly in the last, you know, cycle that we've seen where liquidity and capital has been available, you've seen a lot of storytellers and product builders raise a lot of capital but are struggling to build businesses out of that, right? So that's something that I care for a lot. I try to examine that. And finally, uh, co-founder chemistry. Mere liye bahut zaruri hai ki the founders know each other for a number of years and have worked with each other, either hostel roommates, ya ek jaga naukri ki hai saath mein, ya pehle startup kiya hai, because this whole fad of finding a co-founder in the last six months a year, and then raising capital is a disaster. Ha, exceptionally it might work. I know some cases where it has. But nine times out of 10, it's heading straight for a disaster. Right. Matlab, you know, shaadi ki baat kar rahe the, to puri zindagi nikal jati hai husband wife mein hi nibhane ke liye. Right. Imagine finding somebody six months and then building a business. With, you're going to spend more time with that person than your life partner, right? It's, it's, it's very difficult. So these are the things, broadly. No, I think fair enough. And um, you're totally right that um, finding that chemistry outside marriage in a business is also equally important. Um, so, you know, today, um, we also have a lot of young entrepreneurs um, who you say, you know, just say, you know, 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 it's probably too much to expect that you know, you know, maturity or experience. Hoga. Now I have these two young daughters in this, sitting in this room and listening to the talk, and they want to become entrepreneurs at a young age. So, um, now my point is, do, and today we also talk about mentors. Uh, you know, you need a mentor to be able to take you there. Um, so, how, how should a young entrepreneur find that mentor early on to be able to find that dream that they want to realize? I mean, you know, I have another guy out there who's in 10th standard wanting to start a business. <laughs> so, if they are so young, if they want to become an entrepreneur, so how will it work for them? How will that 
where will that mentorship come from them? Do we need a more formal mentorship infrastructure which might just come from our educational institutions or do we need to sort of have it, um, and you know, I'm, you're a mentor to a lot of uh, startup founders, so, uh, and or, you know, I would want you to end this question by telling us, you are a mentor, but who is your mentor? So, once again, Ritu ji, you have asked some 10-15 questions at the same time. So, <laughs> we'll, we'll try and unbundle them. Uh, you might have to remind me along the way, but uh, let's, let's start with mentors. Let's first and foremost debunk the mentor myth. myth. Too many mentors can become tormentors. When there are too many voices telling you what to do, you should find the nearest door and get out of there. Right. Uh, I think the biggest, I'll come to mentors in a, in, a, in a minute. I'll come back to this. Right. So let's park that aside. Why? Because if you are going to be successful, you are going to be successful despite not having a mentor. And if you're not going to be successful, if you don't have that DNA, no mentor can make you successful. So we'll come back to that, right? It's, it's too, what zada, I mean, people are giving away equity to mentors and, you know, stay away from that. What you must do if you are a new, or somebody who wants to become an entrepreneur, especially somebody who's very young, the one thing that's critical is take up a sales job. Agar dhanda samajna hai, if you really want to learn how to do business, learn how to sell, What do I mean by that? It could be anything. Summer internships, you could be selling, you know, back then people used to sell phone directories. You could, you could sell anything. It doesn't matter what. But interacting with people, trying to sell them something, getting money out of them, there is no better way to learn business, to learn how to be an entrepreneur, right? Uh, that's, that's the first point I would make. The second point is, Doing is really the new thinking. Right. Things change so fast that if you sit down to think of the perfect business plan and the perfect product and getting that right mentor, you're not going to get very far. Aapko karna hai ki you start doing. And if you're doing something, it doesn't matter if you're embarrassed of it. right? In fact, if you're not embarrassed about your product, then you're doing something very wrong. You should be embarrassed about your products and about the business plan that you've developed. But if you keep doing, what does doing mean? What does doing entail? Doing entails activity. It means momentum. It means moving forward. You will stumble across people who can help you along the way. Right? Somewhere, somehow, you will meet people. And third, today, the internet has truly made the world flat. It is amazing, but some of the top entrepreneurs in the world if you write an email from your heart, and it's not hard to find their email addresses, right? And if you have a good story to tell, you might be surprised that you'll get a response back from them. So don't be afraid to ask, just get out there. But don't put your eggs in that mentor basket and say, ek acha mentor mil gaya, to meri zindagi ban gai. That's not going to happen. The only thing a mentor can do, in my view, in my experience, is maybe multiply your resources by two, three, four times. A million dollars and a right mentor. And what is a right mentor? A right mentor is not somebody who tells you what to do. A right mentor is somebody who asks you the right questions. And you figure out yourself what you must do. Right? That million dollars with the right mentor will feel like three, four million dollars. Because it gives you, you can do in lesser time what you would have done otherwise. For example, a business like mine, let's say Shadi, right? I would say, you know, it's something that should be built in five, six years, not 20 years, yeah. with the right mentor, right? right? Why did it take us so long? The time is very different. Okay. So that's what a mentor can do. They can accelerate uh, your learning. And, and uh, if you have the right one, I think it can go a long way. Sure. No, I think um, that's very well said that, you know, times change and we cannot always have the same mentors also. Um, because, you know, you need people um, on different stages of your business who are probably different uh, for you. 
Um, you know, people are dying to ask questions from you here. I can almost see a hand <laughs> going up. And uh, so I'll ask you this one final question before I give it yeah. to them to ask um, their questions is that, uh, you know, we talk about funding winter and everybody in this room wants to, <laughs> for you to invest in their business. Is it real? And at what stage is it real for any business? And what, what are your views on a funding winter? Do you think it's not possible to get a funding uh, in today's time? Let me first start by saying this is the best time to build a business, right? The top companies in the world, whether it was Amazon, whether it's Google, whether it's Flipkart, which is the biggest example in India, right? Uh, our own company, uh, all of these have been started in recessions or what is called the funding winter, right? When in climates like that, you can make one rupee stretch far more than you would otherwise. The cost of employees goes down. Attrition goes down. You are not forced to keep up with the next door guy. You can focus on the things that matter. Right? And what matters? Uh, and what is this funding winter? Frankly, funding winter, this is a cycle, right? This is a business cycle. You sit down and nervous. I will come to you. I thought I had something wrong. You muscular, so I was scared. But funding winter is just a cyclical thing, right? You have boom periods and you have bust periods. It's creative destruction and it's absolutely needed. When a new technology emerges, when a new paradigm emerges, nobody knows what exactly will be successful, but it will change the landscape forever. So every technological paradigm will bring with it thousands of companies and more than 70, 80% of those will fail, maybe even 90%. And that's desired. That's not a bad thing. Okay? So don't look at funding winter and say, oh my God, now I can never get funded. That's not true. Right? Companies are still getting funded. I'm going to give you two things to think about which will work for you, not just in a funding winter, but any time in the course of building your business. Uh, I'm going to change the meaning of these acronyms that, what is B2C? Okay, for me it is back to customers. Right, thank you. Somebody got it. But let me explain. Kya hota hai na, when money is readily available, hum sanity ko chhodke vanity mein giri jate hai. Right? We, we are not solving a problem for the customer anymore. What are we doing? We are seeing what we want to see and what story the VC wants to hear so the money can come in. Because, and nobody is to blame. Because if you don't raise your raise your competitor will raise your out of the market. So you have to play that game. Okay? So everybody's focus shifts on other things. Right? But what really matters as far as your customer is concerned? There's only two questions. Why will they love you? <clears throat> this could be true of your life partner also, by the way. Why will they love you? Right. And why will they not leave you? Right. Very simple. Or jitne startups ye boom period mein start hoon hai na, 80% of them cannot answer these questions. Because wo focus karne ka time hi mila. This is product market fit, basically. If you have a product market fit ka definition, puche, if you can answer these two questions well, you found product market fit. Okay. That's B2C. What does B2B mean? Hmm? Back to basics, thank you. Somebody is awake. Good. And what is back to basics? Dekhi, tak mene, I told you I'm a Banya family. I have two lines in my mind. Right? One is top line, okay? And one is bottom line, profit. Now, there are five different types of profit. CM1, CM2, CM3, adjusted EBITDA, normalized EBITDA, EBITDA. So, these things are a great way. Sure, there's some value as far as financial analysts are concerned on these numbers. But for the average person, these things should not hold any value. Right? These are a great way to distract yourself. 
फॉर एग्जाम्पल सेल्स क्या होता है आई आस्क लॉट ऑफ फाउंडर्स आपका सेल्स क्या है वॉट शुड बी दैट नंबर राइट बेसिकली सेल्स इज जो घर में बचा आफ्टर रिटर्न आफ्टर डिस्काउंट आफ्टर टैक्स टैक्स तो गवर्नमेंट ले गया वो आपका सेल्स कैसे हुआ राइट तो यू कांट कंफ्यूज जी एम वी विद सेल्स इंप्लॉइज पीपल टेक a lot of pride and write long linkedin post saying today we have reached 1000 employees how is that a good thing managing people is the worst thing in the world it's the most expensive thing in the world you know what my definition of a great business is go to the office plug a computer in write an algorithm and never ever come back to work not a single employee that's the best business in the world right great margins nobody to manage but these excessive times shift our focus away from the basics to all the other things that keep you in the race to raise capital but are very rapidly taking your business towards a long towards a tall hard wall yeah so yeah that's what i'd say in terms of i don't even know if that answers your question but <laughs> no i think it did uh, for a lot of it uh, probably it made a lot of sense yeah. to understand you know why profits are really important uh, if you are going to do and more work than profits that, cash if you are profitable then even if you don't get funding you're good to go 